Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer. Buddha at the Gas Pump is a continuing series of conversations with spiritually awakening people. I've done hundreds of them now, and if this is new to you and you'd like to check out previous ones, please go to batgap.com, B-A-T-G-A-P, and look under the Past Interviews menu. This program is made possible by the support of appreciative viewers and listeners. So if you appreciate it and feel like supporting it in any amount, there is a PayPal button on every page of the site. And for people who don't like PayPal, some don't, there's a uh, donations page which explains other ways of supporting. And actually, I should mention one good way of supporting that's not even financial, although that's essential, is if you leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher or one of those things, if you listen to this as a podcast, because it um, improves the sort of ranking of the podcast in those platforms. My guest today is David Thomas, who sometimes is known as Yogi David Thomas on Facebook <laughs> or whatever. Um, David is a self-realization teacher, speaker, and writer living in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, through the practice of jnana yoga and meditation, he has acquired a deeper understanding of the inner self and true liberation. David now seeks to support individuals in their, in their pursuit of self-realization through his writing and speaking. The insights he shares with his, within his videos, quotes, and poems are created to help nurture the healing of individuals seeking release from their pain and suffering. All of his teachings come from his personal experience, so he gives an inside perspective on being lost in ignorance to finding the truth within and experiencing nirvikalpa samadhi. One conversation with him truly has the power to change the way you see and experience life. David wrote that, I didn't. <laughs> but who knows, my I'm wife, about to have one, so maybe will. My wife wrote that, <laughs> I didn't. My your, wife. Your wife wrote that, okay. <laughs> yeah, passed it. <laughs> Does she always feel that way, even like when you're not taking out the garbage? Um, <laughs> we'll leave it to her. <laughs> uh, okay, let me get you in trouble. Um, the love and wisdom he radiates is a blessing to all seekers of truth. And she may have written that or not, but I also concur with that sentiment. I've listened to hours of David's uh, YouTube videos, and it's... I often say this when I interview people, but I've really enjoyed listening to David. Um, there's a real sweetness and genuineness in <clears throat> the way he speaks, and he's obviously speaking from personal experience and has a sincere desire to help people, which is always wonderful. So I think we're going to budget our time today between um, you know hearing David's personal story uh, which you know hasn't always been an easy ride for him <laughs> and uh, and you know how he came through all that and got to where he is today and and also there's some nice knowledge points we want to discuss um, you know about enlightenment and awakening and you know perhaps the dark side of those things and the difference between self-realization and God realization a bunch of different points like that that interest us both and I think will interest the audience. Um, so let's get, st and, and also as always um, this is being live streamed on YouTube and if as you're listening you feel like sending in a question go to the upcoming interviews page on batgap.com and there's a form at the bottom of that page through which you can submit a question. Okay so David let's uh, Let's kind of start with your personal story. I mean, obviously we don't have to cover every little thing that ever happened to you, but the things that you feel are have been most significant in sort of leading you toward interest in spirituality and actually, you know, enjoying some of the fruits of that interest. So basically, where like where we start? Yeah. Uh, well. I mean, you know, uh, you grew up in a small town in Arizona, as I understand it. Yeah. Oh, it it just hard for me because it's so like I can zoom in on all of it, so I just want to see like where we start. So basically, I, I start from a small town in the desert, Arizona, um, and it's not too much. So it's not. It's like if if you can imagine. If you ever watched um, what's that show? Lord of the Rings, The Shire. It's mm -hmm. forgotten yeah, somewhere in the lost little, land. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So imagine turning that to a desert. So then that's it's like forgotten. So it's just to itself isolated. So that's where it all starts. Um, being in the desert is a different environment from being um, anywhere else because you're free. 
<laughs> like you could just go in the desert if you want to <laughs> if you want to make contraptions just go to the desert do that if you want to go here go do that it's open in the street it's um it's however much space you want so this is like my natural it's it's free go out and be mm -hmm. um but what happens is the human conditioning part comes into play um the way I grew up in the desert was with, uh, I had to go through abuse from my dad. So that's like the start of my reality. Day one, you're abused, you're bullied all the time and things like that. Um, I come from a house of how many of us? Six kids, two parents, so it was eight in the house. It's like two rooms at a time. Um, being poor, so poverty in the desert, being African-American in the desert. Just a, just a real horror story. Um, I witnessed my mom uh, attempt suicide. I was the one that found her. I was around 10 or 8-ish. Um, so I, I my, my mom attempted that three times too, by the way. Man. And, and this is what starts a person's reality. Because if you're young and you don't, we pick up things as we go. So if this is where you start, this is your house. Man, I was exposed to like real, real, real reality. So that's just where it starts. So I found my mom um, lifeless, basically, in a bed. Um, and this is when I, my real, like, you have to go through it to get through it to come back to understand it, how it was all moving you in, in, in a way to make who you are. But this was like what I could say a real, the first real miracle I've ever witnessed in my, my life because. It's like I opened the door and then it was action. So I see my mom commit suicide and things like this. And I'm I'm trying to wake her up. She's lifeless and things like this. But then this is when when there is nothing, you know, that can help you. But you, you still have to like pull there. There's have to be something. Um, I can't really put this into words. So you were like, what, eight years old or something when that happened? Uh around eight to ten because yeah. there's no like clock like <laughs> things like that so yeah. i was very young so i just it just hit me like in my my heart literally like go check on your mom and we get these like insights all the time every day but for some time it was like an urge in me and i was like all right so i just went like i couldn't just say it. <laughs> so I'm you wouldn't ordinarily have done that but you had this intuition or something yeah yeah that's like an urge. literally like if you know how, how you have an idea? Let's go on vacation to Hawaii. <laughs> and then the whole trip is just, uh, oh, yeah, that'll be it. It was like a strong urge in me, like a, like a pull at me, my being. Mm. Go check on your mom. So I'm like, I feel that, and I'm, I'm just pulled like, towards it. All right, where's my mom? I'm going to go check on her. So when I open the door, I find the situation, and instantly it freezes. Mm. Everything freezes because there is nothing you can think at this point. Because I, <laughs> I'm aware that I, I don't know what to do and it is all on me. It's action right now. And this is the most, like, coming from the household I came from, it was dark. My dad was like the bully, the dark side and all this um, abusive, bipolar and mad crazy. He was um, physically abusively, uh, ab abusive, um, just a real bully. Um, yeah verbally and all these things so my mom was literally like my light in my world she was loving caring um she would comfort me uh, she would teach me things so when this is stripped away from you is it is it right then and there so what'd you do call 911 i didn't know that because uh -huh. where i'm from um see being poor you don't even have a phone sometimes so uh -huh. who can you call sometimes so this is real real reality um and it just like slow down. I know that this has happened. I'm processing what is happening, but it's on me to do something. And right there is when I don't <laughs> the connection to I am this puppet, the avatar, the the whatever, and there was something more happened, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um this is a memory that was even suppressed, um, and I had to go through my wa uh, my awakening as when it was happening to realize that I experienced this truly. But now it's so like vivid, I can even see the cover and all the things and stuff. But this was the really like the first time I've ever witnessed a miracle because like I don't even know how to give you the words, but through me holding my mom and everything, I I don't know how to say it. It just like. Like your being attracts a person back to this thing, or I, it, 
So you're saying you, you kind of drew her out again, drew her back from the brink of death or something by your attention? Is that what you're saying? So say if you're a uh, say if your flame is going out, right, and yeah. I'm a light right here, and I go in, I grab you, and whatever. I, it, there is no words for this, but my will, like the will of me, going beyond any any possibility. Just it is possible because I am, and I will not let this not be. So like your light entered somebody else and and wakes them up, like. <laughs> Like a flame type thing. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, so was um, there any kind of medical intervention? Had she taken pills or something? Or yeah, she had taken pills, but this gave um, my dad enough time to go get a phone to call the um, uh, the awesome. medics or, right. or whatever. So then when they came here, she was um she was she was back back, but she wasn't back, but she was be her heart was beating. She's coming around, yeah. Yeah. So then they did the whole pump her stomach, all the things like that. So. That's where it starts. This is like my start, my find, my foundation. Is so, your mom still alive today? Yeah. Good, good. I bet you she's mom, proud of you. Man, no, it's not even. It's not even like that. Uh, okay. Um, if, we, if we talk about enlightened beings, my mom would be the most enlightened being I've ever met. Mm. She knows all this stuff, but lives this stuff and has no words for this stuff. It just is to her yeah. because she's experienced the same type of things too, that I've experienced. Um, going all the way over there, experiencing what is and that you still are, and then coming back and being, there is nothing like really to like rattle you anymore. It's true, you had a near-death experience yourself, and we'll get to that later on. So, and, and that was due to an attempted suicide, right? So that, exactly. We'll come back to that. But, but anyway, to pick it up from there, from where you were. So um, that's just basically like my foundation of who I am to start. My mom and my dad, like the dark and the light together. Mm. And seeing, seeing that you can lose it right here, right now, in this action, you can lose everything that you love right now. That's my foundation. Um, and then it just grows as far as as who I become. So so then, like like when I say my my dad is the dark side of it, um, abusive, kicked out the house, always fighting, like fighting, fighting. Um, but a grown person fighting a kid. So even my dad add to my spiritual spirituality because I remember one time getting choked slammed through a table, hitting the floor, and it's like cement, and being choked out. And, uh, and I remember telling him, I can't breathe, and he was, he's dead on it, yes, this is the point. So I don't have no, like when I say something, is I mean it how I'm exactly trying to clearly say it. My life is in danger, how clearly you can say it, you feel me? So that, that's how I speak, so this is my reality, but from that, um, outer body experiences happen. Um, learning to um, astral project and all these different type of things is because he used to th he used to threaten us like we'll be in a room and it'd be like when I come in there if if you're not asleep whoever's up that's it for you. So one thing about being still is that your 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 awareness doesn't be still or. <laughs> it, <laughs> How can I say this? Um, this whole spirituality is about being still, not being in the game and caught in the game. So when at a young age you're forced to play still and you're still being aware on the outside, but you're being still, it starts to give you the ability to like consciously project yourself outwardly and things like that. So to me, um, all these things are just natural. I guess, <laughs> am I natural? Um, and then we go into things like, what is it? When you're being, uh, what is that called? Uh, when you're being pushed down, you're trying to, you're waking up, but you're not moving. What is oh, that called? Um, sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis. Yeah. Um, things like that. You, you start to be very aware of it at a young age. So you're like, oh, I'm stuck again. So this is how I process. I'm stuck again. Hmm. So then I have to really go back and, and calm down and then realize and then get out. So what I'm learning naturally is how to like astral project, get out of my body, in my body, things like this. But this is just like um, lucid dreaming, because if you're aware, trying to be aware of someone coming to get you 
And if you fall asleep, you fall asleep with that awareness on still. So when you enter your dream, you're aware. Yeah. So you can. So, yeah, so you're saying that all this adversity actually sort of cultured experiences <laughs> in you that many people would say are spiritual things, which some people actually try to do, you know, in order to be more spiritual. They try to astral project or lucid dream and all. And you're saying that kind of the difficulties you went through were actually culturing that when you were a kid. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's hard, for, but, but this is like, to me, this is like saying dreaming. It's nothing new. Because I would just assume all that is dreaming, what you're speaking of. But when we get into the spiritual realm or the spiritual world, we, they start, okay, this is a flavor, this is a flavor, that is this. And I start to realize this is already, because all this is natural. It's just people don't have the awareness to pay attention. And that's the only difference thing. Like, we are all the same. It's all one. So that's the only difference. I just had to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, sensing energies or auras. These are just words. But when you have a bully and based on his energy, when he comes in a room, you naturally are going to read people's energy, going to know from how they're reacting or acting and things like this. So you, 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 you just pick this up naturally. Mm. Um, Everyone has it, but they're they're giving it the wrong idea, so they're making it into an idea. Oh, I can be supernatural when you're already it. Yeah. So it just it just so <laughs> like my story just keeps going and getting dark, and then um, I just had to endure a lot. But um, see, I don't I don't know where to keep going. Okay, just, I'll ask you a question. Um, so. Th so right now we're talking around the age of eight or ten or something like that. And I heard you say that you were a bright kid. You 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 were very intelligent. You you did well in school and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose school might have been a sort of a respite from what was going on at home. At least you could get away and get, yeah, we go get for some free lunch. get some food. Yeah, get a free for lunch. The lunch. <laughs> <laughs> So um, if, if we could talk about school, right? So so moving up, um, growing older, all right, this is like a regular reality of, of madness and chaos and then love in the chaos. My mom's the love in the storm. Um, it's four boys, two girls, and it's um, we're all like, let me see, my brother's a year and a half older than me, and then there's me. Then there's a two-year gap and a two-year gap, and then there's a two-year gap, and then my younger sister, she's just, she's like, so far, she's just younger. <laughs> so, so it's a lot of um, male energy. My dad is like the dominant one to keep all everyone here, but it's a lot of dominant energy, and everybody wants to be the one. So when we talk about ego, it's naturally you want to thrive, be the king, or be the one in your whole environment. But it's it's um a lot of boys, so I had to deal with that. Like, who has the biggest ego? Who has the and and there is no rules to this. Um, one of my brothers is a gangster. One of my brothers is just a hard worker. Then you have me, and then I have my younger brother who is like the just a wild one. So it's a whole lot of like <laughs> mess. Kind of mixture. So you, yeah. So you learn to adapt and read people and and adapt to different um energies and things like this um but at the same time this is when i really start to um know how to use what i would say my gift is because in school we're just in school but i would have this gift to pick up things mm. um if i go back to when <laughs> i'm, in, I'm <laughs> let me see how i can say this if I start back when I was first in school, I, I can remember being in first grade. Um, I can remember being aware, like when I first became aware, like a duality split. But I can remember in first grade trying to learn how to read. And I remember they was teaching me the letters. And then my teacher was trying to teach me a silent letter. Oh, yeah. So like knowledge, you don't, you don't say knowledge, you say knowledge yeah. like that. Exactly. Yeah. That's, so, so that's, especially, that's especially true in English. English is a screwy language. So, so imagine you being aware and you're like, it's not knowledge, it's knowledge. So, and, and you're writing it and you're hearing it and you're writing it. But then the teacher's trying to tell me that, oh, it doesn't make a sound, but yet I'm still going to put it there. And my mind couldn't wrap my, like, it, 
Like, it can't wrap around anything that doesn't make sense. Um, my mom taught me how to count. My first, my first thing I consciously learned how to do was one plus one equals two. I could remember it. So er, based on the foundation of my knowledge, one plus one has to equal two. So when you say <laughs> it's not, not it's knowledge, but it's not said knowledge and there's a K, it just doesn't add up. I can't understand it. So at that age, in first grade, I realized that this was just pretend. This is how I can just write it off to continue the game. So I realized, like, reality is not, like, really, <laughs> like, <laughs> something you could really, a foundation on, because the rules don't even make sense. Um, I said that to say just when I, um, so when I got older, um, being in school, I wouldn't learn the same way. Like when we say something is, if you say this is a pen, I would learn at, as the concept of this is a pen, not like this is a pen. So the way I learn is I just have concepts. So in your reality, this is called a pen, the concept of a pen. So what this does is give you a lot of freedom to move concepts and like grow your learning. It's like adding eight, eight colors, but then you start mixing them and making more. So this is how I learned. So when I was in school, it really, school is like the program system. So this is the Big Bang. This is how medical works. This is how whatever works. They're, they're telling you reality, basically. But my reality was I'm trying to duck and dodge my dad and my house and our lights may not be there. We may not have nothing to eat. So reality was more real than just being programmed. So I was I, I would always do well in school because I can I can I can I can mirror back anything. Um, so my whole class, I, I did very well in school. I uh, when it comes to math, I skip a couple grades in math class is because you just taught me the formula. If you teach me the formula, all right. So cut this, take this, add this, move this, and there it is. I don't know what I'm doing, but I can mirror it back perfectly. So, mm. so I just became super like intelligent just by not believing, I guess. <laughs> um, but that means nothing in my world because then I graduated at like with a full scholarship and um, um, all kind of things. But in my reality, you're poor. So <laughs> n nothing like, like, like nothing happened from that. So I, I had to learn how to use that intellect more than like bet my intellect in academics. Um, because I had to use it in real life. Most people go to school and they learn the theory of. I had to use it. <laughs> so that that's that's what it became. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, I mean, this isn't always the case, but hopefully, school gives us knowledge that we can apply to so-called real life. You know, we become a doctor, or a physicist, or a you know lawyer or whatever. We're we're able to sort of gain skills and 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 all. But are you kind of saying that? Well, I mean, you ended up doing electronics work in, in, the, in the military, right? I mean, did you learn mm -hmm. that in school? Did you go to a technical school to learn that stuff? I went to a technical school, but the technical school taught me about, like, gyroscope, the theory of force and, and gravity and, and protons and neutrons, electricity, the theory. But those are just concepts of mm -hmm. something. But in reality, you're not when you see a wire and you see a wire, this has nothing to do with the theory of it. But... I think people get that confused. The doing of stuff is how you learn. The theory of it is what keeps you safe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we don't need to belabor that point, but um, sometimes theories do learn to do lead to doing. You know, the, somebody formulates a scientific theory and then they test it and it seems to work, and then they end up, you know, applying it and creating some kind of technology out of it. For instance, computers are are based upon knowledge that originally started out rather theoretical and, and eventually became practical. Uh, but it, it's just the difference between apply. Um, you're exactly right what you're saying, apply. Like if electricity, you can learn about electricity and then go apply it because you have that theory. But say like, if we say the theory of enlightenment, we, if we talk about enlightenment. Yeah, that's good. Let's talk about that. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> if, we, if we say the theory of enlightenment, Right. You can learn everything about it, but it will never lead to it because the, the, the saying of it is said it's not in the mind. Yeah. 
And if you didn't catch that first part, learning and learning, you're learning, you're learning the pointers to say that exact same thing. So people, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, <laughs> but it's you know, I mean, I first heard about enlightenment from a book, um, and and somebody was reading um, this book by Timothy Leary and Richard Alpert, who became Ramdas. It was their translation of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and they're reading about enlightenment. And I'm driving a car, and somebody in the back seat's reading this book, and I thought. Enlightenment, wow, you know, that exists. Yeah, that's, that's what life is all about. You're supposed to get that. And, uh, but that was totally just an idea at that point. But then, you know, over, over time, over the years, I did various things to make it more of an experience. Uh, so, I mean, th theories have their value because they can kind of give you a vision of possibilities. Pointers. Yeah, they're only the pointers. They're pointer, people, yeah. people get caught on the pointer rather than where it's telling you to go or do. Yeah. And some people know all the pointings rather than the, <laughs> did you make the trip? Right. Oh, no, but let me tell you, you're going to need gas and you're going to have to go <laughs> northwest. And you're like, did you go? Yeah. Oh, no, but I can tell you, <laughs> I've talked there <laughs> and it just... Uh, a, a different realm. It is a mind realm that gets you get caught in. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the biggest thing that we have to realize that we've been taught to process everything in our reality through our mind to think it. So you thinking about yourself as if you're not here. Mm. <laughs> oh me, um, me, 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 and what I feel. Aren't you feeling it? So who? Why would you have to say it if you're feeling it? You should know it. Yeah, and it, it makes a lag, a lag of being, and it, it it's the it's the madness that we all have, and we share it too. Let me tell you about me. Ooh, huh. let, let me tell you about me. <laughs> oh, you want to go tell us about us? But <laughs> we're just it. <laughs> There's a funny joke. It's like, uh, me, me, me. Okay, enough about me. What do you think about me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the waking up part is that it's all, it is all me. Like every word can, that could be uttered in the om, it is, uh, it is God. Every single thing, it, what else can we talk about? Yeah. And it, that's the funny part. But, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, um, all right, so you did the school thing and you got some technical training and if we're not jumping too fast, you ended up in the military, right? So, yeah. Joining the Navy. So, so this is what happens in your reality. So they, they teach you and they tell you if you get a get high scores, graduate, go to school, get a job and all the, 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 the I'm grown now. Right. Right. So I'm from a small city. So once you have a job and the the the, the cost of living is low so you can maintain. So life like ran out very fast. I had a job. I had a house. I had a car. We had Xbox Live, we <laughs> internet. What else could you need? We it was it. Like, yeah. it, well, what would a person need in life? And it seemed so like limited. Like, now do this for the rest of your life. Yeah, is this all and, there is to the circus? Uh, yeah, there must be something more. Yeah, like this is <laughs> like it's kind of scary. But you have to laugh how scary that is if you get everything you want. Yeah. He just like, yeah. Well, I mean, just this week, two prominent people committed suicide, and, and you know, most people would have envied their lives. They would, they would have thought, wow, these people have tons of money. They, they, you know, travel the world, live very exciting lives. Obviously, something was missing for them. It's, it's that connection. As a being of light, you need to be connected to that light because the outside, it, this, is what, this is what I'm saying when I'm talking about school. They say, go get these things and you'll be accomplished, um, complete, you'll be happy. And they're all empty. It's like you grab it and there's no substance to it. It just turns to sand. And everyone else who doesn't have it, like, oh, I wish I had that sand. Mm. <laughs> they idolize. So you get caught in that idolize. Yes, if I... If I do more, if I be better, if I work out, if I get the body, if I get the car, if I get the house, I have the dream. So when you have the dream, this must not be it. Because the mind won't let you just, ah, oh, that's it. Oh, no, you have to go out and get the dream. That's what it is. So the Navy was my way out. Like I have, it's, it's like I maxed out on my level being in the desert so I have to go see what's in the world yeah. but I always thought that the world would have the answer for me right. like those people have to know maybe my small town nah, man we just us but the world has to know look they have all these jets cars around the world they have to know 
So I joined the military, and the first day, <laughs> this is how I know so much because I pay attention. It, the first day I joined the military, and soon as my, my drill sergeant or whatever you call it started yelling, I knew I messed up. <laughs> like, <laughs> I knew it. Like, oh. And I had signed for, um, like, what is it, five years? So as soon as you heard it on day one, I just seen how long I'm going to have to deal with this. Um, the thing about it is my reality was so raw. Like, when my dad yells at me, and he, he'll be like, whatever he sends, he, he is guaranteed to happen. It's not like a threat. It is. And if you smile one more time, we're going to be, and it's already coming. <laughs> so wow. so yeah. if you have a drill sergeant, I'll pick you up by your bootstraps and, and you're not, it's nothing. <laughs> like the, the game, I know that the game, like you, there's no possible way that you can do this without having some repercussions. So therefore, since I, my awareness is over like that, it doesn't bother me. Hmm. So but I've seen people get programmed. Like when we talk about programming, how, how to make someone do something that they don't love for eternity, I've seen it happen in boot camp. Because I'm just aware in boot camp and I can't be touched. So it's, it's, it's like, this is, my reality is too raw, where you can actually have to fight in all these different things. But in boot camp, it's just like the noise of it. The noise of it is so peaceful because, ah, yes, all right, it sounds nice. Yeah, so, I've never been in boot camp, thank God. But um, yeah, my understanding of it is they try to break it down so that you really won't have a lot of independent thinking and will of your own. That, so you'll just be ready to do whatever you're told. Exactly what it is. Because, look, look, look um, it's kind of like sales. Like, we, we operate within our, our environment. Like, um, even in relationships, if I'm this, that person is that, and the way we are, we operate, give or take, and to make a, what you would call a relationship of us. Um, you, have a, you, you have a known, you have a family, you have a neighborhood, you have your grocery store, you have your meal you love to eat at a certain time, things like this. This is what you call you. This is your ego. What happens when they strip you and take you away and sit you in a, um, put you in a whole new environment, you don't know who you are in this environment. You don't know if you're the top, you're the bottom, and... and this causes your being itself to like go into this alert state and then they they maximize it by not letting you sleep and yelling and and they go even deeper by it. it's not even you um say if, if the person by you go to sleep everyone with it around him gets in trouble so it, it like maxes you out in stress but then i seen how like stress opens up your mind uh for errors in thinking because instead of like the stress is painful and you don't know it's an anxiety. So people start telling you stuff and, you, and your mind will start to accept it to be, OK, if I do this, if I act like this, I won't get that. And I seen people overnight like join boot camp and like when the sergeants or the, the petty officers are around, it's, it's all quiet. But when they leave, we talk like you out, you still you. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen people literally change and not be them no more. Uh, so this is why when I blow this up in reality, I know why. It's like from my personal experience, I've seen it like a, and it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter who, because if you're not set in that still place as it, or identifying yourself at least awareness, like if you're oblivious that you are aware silently, whatever your mind starts to grasp, and that's why they do it for a certain amount of time, you become that person. Mm -hmm. This is why you can just teach a person with a heart and then take away all that and teach them to go to war. Yeah. And they won't connect that they're killing people and then they'll come back home, but what, they won't connect the whole dots. Like, you're a murderer, you know that, right? Just because you shot that side, it's still shooting people. And this, this is what, um, what we have when we have veterans. So we're all broken in the inside, the outside, <laughs> the with no awareness of it, and then they give you pills. But I've seen these things. So that's the military. That, this is what I've seen, brainwash. Literally how you condition the person, take the person out and put the program in, and now you have that. So we play it and play it and um, overwork a person. Um, as a civilian, you have um, something, you're not even aware you have a choice. Um, most people, they don't they don't realize that they have choices. So like 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 you don't like your job, 
go get a new job. Nah, but you'll go back to your job because that's not even like a choice to you. If you're signing the contract to go kill people and murdering people and you're aware of this, this is something that destroys you from the inside. So what this calls for me, alcoholism. Because you got to, um, and this is when my life turns darker into addiction to alcohol, to sex and things like this, is because it's, you're disconnecting your humanity at this point. So you're just trying to numb it out. You gotta, yeah, you gotta block it out. Yeah. It's like if you if, if if you know that you're building bombs and then you watch on TV that you, these bombs, the same bombs you're building, has dropped on someone and and killed millions or a hundred thousand people or injured some people. You gotta connect that dot all the way through and see that it's this one. Yeah. <laughs> people don't do that. They blank out like a war. The war. No, this is the war. <laughs> Yeah, I remember you saying that um, you drank a lot in the military and yet you actually managed to do your job okay um, while being drunk all the time. That, that kind of amazed me. It's because if you have a certain awareness, you're not the body. See, yeah. people get drunk and they black out, but they're, if you ever blacked out, your body can still be moving and your consciousness is gone. So you still know how to go and, and things like that. But if you consciously black out, you're in it, but you don't identify with it. So you can see that it is drunk and therefore you can correct on it. <laughs> it's a deep, it's... So you had some kind of witnessing value even way back then. Because for my dad. Uh, so it's ever, sort ever of like since that, I never that really snapped back all the way. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so, cool. So to summarize then, I mean, with the whole thing with your dad, you were kind of awake Oh, it woke something up in you uh, in a difficult way, but you know, and there was some experiences of astral traveling or you know out of body experiences and this and that, and mm -hmm. uh, that kind of stayed with you. And and uh, yeah. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it and uh, it, so then you're in the military and it's difficult there, and you're starting to drink a lot, but still it, the drinking wasn't able to get to it. It wasn't able to snuff out that that like, inner awakeness that had somehow begun to develop. Yes, because that it, that awareness is there, and you can't hide because that awareness is you. But this is at the end, you find out like what you really are. That awareness, that what I I would call it a black hole, is because I to survive where I had to survive, you have to turn off your heart because it, it's poverty, it's gangster life, it's it's thugs, it's it's even people, in, even in states. Arizona, or are you talking about in the military gangster life? Um, both. Oh really? Okay. Um, in Arizona, it it really it's like it's the wild wild west. Yeah. <laughs> like like you, it's so close to um, Mexico. You got the cartel. You got all these drug things happening. You uh -huh. have real. It, it's, it's 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 very crazy. Yeah. But then in the military, this is the deeper game, and it's a subtle game. And um, the way I see everything now is gangs, but they're subtle. We just don't say it, but then we act perfectly like a gang. Um, when we say Democrats, Republican, two big gangs, two big gangs. What else would it be? <laughs> because like, if you say I'm a this or that, you really, if we sat down and talked it out, some of those ideas over here and some of these ideas over here are who you are. Yeah. But but it's either Bloods or Crips. You red or you blue. You yeah. in or you out. And that's how the reality is. Um, but people look at the military like if 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 I change my gang hat. <laughs> put on a new hat. I'm in the Navy now. Yeah. They see people. They see the narrative more than the the reality. So this is why people got to start reading narratives and actually take time to process what's happening. But in the military, um, you got world gangs. This it, like it's even more dangerous because where you're from, like your own program, you know. Okay, this is the side of the red. This is side of the blue. I'm over here, so don't cross the line. In the military, um, it's you got your natural gangs of people, who tribalism, like, okay, we're this color, let's get together, this our gang. You got people, gangs from the same state, oh yeah. And then you got real gangs that I'm really a gangster in the military, where are you from? Okay, we together. And then you have like Black Panther gangs, you have uh, the KKK gangs, and shh, we just don't tell it. Really? But it's, so you're saying that among the the enlisted people in the military it was it's almost like a prison where you have 
you know, all it these sort of crazy. gangs within the prison that are at each other's throats. So you, that, that kind of dynamic is going on in, in the military as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because it, not, human nature never changed. We just changed the name. Yeah. It, it, so it's not all change. brotherly love and hey, we're all in this together. There's, there's you just this. see it in the uniform, so we look uniform. But if you broke it down and start asking questions, you'll see all the divide. The same thing. This is how I. Le- this is why, the way, this is why when I speak to people, it could change their life so much. Is because it's like I had a small version of a city. Like in the big city, it's you versus world trying to figure the world out. But if they 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 condense it, you're ready to pull it in very much, very fast. But we have all those type of gangs, and then you have power gangs. We have officer sides who get paid way more and whatever, and do like we're the doers. So like 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 if you would say slave master and slave, the the officers they drive the car, they drive the jet. <laughs> we gotta put up the jet, make the tire, do all the work and stuff, and they get paid more. So this makes a different gang too. And then you, even within those, you have your uh, ranking. Yeah. So pay grades and power is what converts in. I've seen it manipulate people so much. Like literally, if I get a pay grade, you treat me like if I just became God now. Mm-hmm. But the same person that was here yesterday that you hated, but now I got to upgrade in my my rank on your collar. You literally can get people to do weird things. And it's it, it see it's beyond the uniform. But no mm-hmm. one talks about the truth. Okay, yeah. so when, when you were telling us about your family life, you know, when you were 8 or 10 or whatever, and your, the way your father treated you and stuff, you were able to tie that back to a, a, some kind of spiritual lesson it taught you and even feel grateful for it. Mm-hmm. So it, how would you summarize your whole military experience in that same way? What, in what way did it contribute to your spiritual development? Be- it taught me. It's like a the fast trick, uh, the fast track around the world. Since you like, I can't go around the world, but bring the world to me. So then we see that we're all programmed by the same programming, mm. right? Um, because I, spirituality just talks about the spirit, but you want to be a whole person. That's holy to be whole to understand what's going around you fully. If you can fully understand what's going around you, you can apply yourself. You can adapt yourself. You can understand the the person that's trying to kill you. Um, that what what the military did is break me literally take away everything that i thought was wasn't valuable like family connection at least having friends and things like that took all that away um put me gave me money okay now i have money so it it, it i use the understanding of the military so you you trade out for your happiness for for what life is for the the lie of happiness so we chase these riches these goals and these things and you don't get anything what we but what i got from that was experience this is the thing i'm always on experience but what did i experience if 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 i chased the mountain of gold and then i got to the mountain and it was a lie what did i get from that that's more than gold so that just showed me it doesn't matter your color, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter where you're from. It showed me that the program of the mind has everybody. Mm-hmm. And it could switch just like that. We, yeah. could be, we could be lovers and then right now we can hate each other more than anything and literally never get off that hate. Mm-hmm. But it could just be a flip. So that's what it taught me. And um, it taught me that people are lying. <laughs> yeah. um, that's the biggest thing that... It, it sounds good. Make the world better again. And then you till you really zoom in and see that like half these people are going through mental things because they're doing this, going through uh, so much. And then they promote alcohol like it's the this is what sailors do. <laughs> they drink. We drink. Yeah. So they give you addiction. <laughs> There's even a song. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? I used to play it on the piano when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a culture. <laughs> yeah. One cool experience you had, which stuck in my mind, was you're out in the middle of the ocean on a boat, and you look up at the stars, you know, and you've never seen so many stars as you can see out there where there's no lights. That that was, I love that kind of experience, and you get that in the desert too, actually, if you go out mm-hmm. from the town a little bit. 
Because, look, 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 I, I never realized it because if that's your natural scenery to see all the way out to the horizon. Yeah. And this is what you can do in the desert. And they have mountains. So you can climb a mountain and see this, like, above the reality. Um, this happens in planes, too. When you're in a plane, you look down. It seems so weird. It looks like a circuit board. It looks like everybody's moving. Mm. But then you realize, like, I'm one of those ants. And what I think as an ant really is so big to me. But when you get a bird's eye view... It's just happening. I've had that same perspective. And then think of the astronauts who go out there and, and you know, to, and just, in the space shuttle, in, in, the, in the International Space Station, or even to the moon, and they look back at the Earth. A lot of the astronauts have had real profound spiritual awakenings. And, and, and then, like, like what you said, when, we, when I was on the ocean, this is like re-seeing what you, like, re-seeing things. So when you see the sky... You see, I know that sky, like the moon, the, the stars, this, that. But when I was put on the ocean, I was on a carrier. I never been on the ocean. I was in the desert, so the 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 it blew my mind basically, and I and it stopped everything. So this is why I was able to take it in. But I realized that the ocean. I don't know how deep the ocean is, and I'm on the edge of a carrier. So if I fall off, I'm gone. Yeah. But I'm realizing, like, and no what, like I will be swallowed up in the abyss of the ocean, and I'm seeing it. Um, we read books like Moby Dick and all these things about how sea creatures and things, but seeing it and it's unlimited. You can see unlimited water, but the thing is, the water is darker than the sky because it's like black, black. But then you see the sky, and you see stars, and there is like. There are more stars. It's like if you grab sand and just throw it up and just kept throwing. It's so many stars. Oh, yeah. But but when you finally see this, this is like one of those views. Either you got to go on a cruise ship or be in the, on that spot. But you can't really share how many stars there really is in this, in this world. But every star is like a universe, a galaxy, a sun. And the number of life that you, it just, the numbers itself will blow you back to see God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's that more stars in the in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches of the world. But you see how we say um, a theory of that? Like, mm -hmm. okay, we can agree in that theory until you see so you it, see and it, it ain't and a theory, and you it kind see of it blows your mind. And then you think about you being one on one of those, and what could, and what, and it just humbles you. It yeah, breaks. Yeah. Like I don't know nothing. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, not to drag us back down to uh, the depths again, but um, back to the dark. so at some point you ended up actually trying to commit suicide, took a bunch of pills, drank a bunch of booze or something. I mean, what brought you to that dark spot? So after the military, um, it's, it's basically used and abused and tossed out and then you're done. So I was, uh, my, when I got in the military, I knew I was getting out because it just wasn't, it, it's not structured for a free thinker. Right. Um, and even like rank, you can have more rank than me and not be, not even be better. So it's weird. Sure, you're not like, wiser and more intelligent or anything. You just took the test. You've been here five years more than me, so you've been taking the test enough. So now you're ranked up. But that right there kills me to, to be wasting time. Like we we're doing something that could take an hour, but yeah, it's taking us three hours because who's in charge? And basically, <laughs> since he has this, we can't do nothing about it. And I knew like this ain't for me. So I knew I was always getting out, but going through all that, like during being in the military, I lost, uh, I was married. I went through a divorce. Um, I had a, my kid, I had a son, my son got put back across the whole country and stuff like this. And then I had a daughter while we split. So it's like my family and everything was in Arizona, but I was stationed across the country. So that right there starts just like, you gave up like your humanity type thing to go play <laughs> military for for nothing so it, it starts to become this black hole um i was born not with a lot of people that supported me the person that the only person that really ever supported me um is, i call her my stepmom she passed away while i was in the military but the military give you four days off you come here come to the funeral and then it's back to work so this dark, it's like this black hole starts to become in me. Um, and it's terrible. P people walk around with all the darkness within them every day. Like when people die, go back to work because you got to survive. 
but it's too much. So I was like just working not to look in the dark that I was gathering. And I kept working and working. I was gathering dark and it was starting to like self-destruct because you can't what you are. You can't lie to yourself. We all try to lie to ourselves, but it just stays within us. So what this does is is you pick up self-destructive habits, um, drinking, going out to the clubs, going trying to find women to sex it out. I lived at a beach. N- nothing could help. So we fast forward that the whole military time. And it gets to the point when I'm at that boat at the edge and I'd rather jump because I don't see nowhere out. So I realized like my mind flipped. It became suicidal. Um, I talk about suicide openly so people can see that you can make it through the pain and enter to the light. But like we say, it sounds nice. Like I'm giving you a story. It may be touching, but in reality, when you you hit the wall, there is nothing to help you. No one to save you. There is no concept. There's nobody. It's 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 hell. It's a real hell. It's yeah. a hell that you 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 can't get out of because you can't, your awareness doesn't go off. The um, so like when you're spiritual, and you start to become aware that there's more in the game. That can play on you and become destructive. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're talking about it openly because it is in the news lately, and um, you know a lot of people commit suicide, especially a lot of veterans. And I think there's a, another alternative that that they should be aware of. I mean, after Robin Williams committed suicide, there were an estimate there was a 10% jump in the number of suicides. It's estimated that about 2,000 people killed themselves after uh, emulating Robin Williams, who otherwise wouldn't have. So you know. Mm-hmm. It's and right now, since it's in the news, that you know they're flashing all these news stories with a suicide prevention hotline, and, and you know this topic isn't directly relevant to the purpose of this show, but it is in a way because life has such tremendous potential and possibility, and it can be so wonderful if you know what to do, and it's just really a shame if somebody throws that away, you know. I was going to connect it by saying like my near death experiences. Yeah, let's um, talk about that. You feel me? Uh, yeah. This is how that how that goes into it. So I, I don't because I just don't want you to because I feel like if we don't talk about how it feels to, in, in those things, people won't recognize it that they're in those spaces to understand. Yeah. If I just say, oh, yeah, I had suicide thoughts. It was crazy. And then we move on. No, I feel let's, like let's people go into it. Yeah. Uh, so, so things like that. This is only why I'm, I'm getting into these things like this. Sure. Um, um, so, so having, having that mindset, that mind frame, um, when I got out the military, it, it was so different because now, now I've went across the world. I've seen a lot of things. I've talked to a lot of people. I'm back home to get everything that I thought I lost, like my house, my friends, my, uh, what my, what my known, I'm getting my known back. Like I'm putting my ego back where it was created right there. Um, but then you change. Nothing stays the same. Everything, everything that I experienced grew me. You cannot stop growing. So when you put yourself in circumstances, situations, you grow more. Um, so what this causes me to go home and not fit. And then that's more depressing because now that I, my life is like put together. Like at first I had it and it was nice. And then I left and then I uh, broke it all down, lost it all. And I built it back and now I'm out and now I'm here. I'm done. It's like if you retired. <laughs> And then you, it became the most like destructive time in my existence because now I'm just at home, I'm chilling. Like there's nothing to do. Um, everybody's struggling around me. Um, they, we, I'm not aware why everybody's struggling. I became more. Uh, I'm still less. It's like, what's the point at this part, uh, at this, at this stage in my life? What was the point? So then it, it gets very dark and destructive. So then it comes down to suicide. Like, I need God or I'm not making it. And and this comes from a personal judgment. Like, I can see my, I'm not those. I'm not the type of person to be rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just rather get well done and be over. Jump in the, the grease and then pull me out. I'm done. I'm not going to live a long life and be lost forever. So it, that's the scariest thing when you're at that such a low point that um, tomorrow I got to go through this, the anxiety and all that. So it came to the point of like um, suicide. But then, so I attempted the same thing I witnessed my mom do and they wouldn't even plan to me 
as I was doing it, but I was just so fed up. And I, this is why I think you only pick up programs and they play back in you. Um, so I, I couldn't, I couldn't like live a life without knowing what, what was the purpose. I would ask preachers, I would ask, I would ask preachers, pastors, I would I would look for God and I, I even joined in college. I was in college classes taking religion courses. Like I'm about to get to the bottom of this. I'm about to figure this out. Nobody knows. Everybody says like they know, but if you ask, do you know? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can tell you what they know. <laughs> so how do you know? No one knows. So it, it became I I was very aware that nobody knows and this makes you become very alone. And then I was like, it's either me and it's God. So then uh, my suicide attempt, it sounds so bad, but it was the, the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I experienced seeing myself dying. But I was, I was aware that I was seeing myself die, and it was so weird to see myself die, but it, was, it wasn't even like... There ain't it, no words. Is it like an out of body experience where you saw your body lying there? It's like if you play if you play a video game or if you play a car game and you push a button and then you could just see the car in front of you like that. Mm. But I became aware that the car was the everything. Like reality, like my reality was like if I push pause and I jumped out of my reality and it was still going and it, and I'm very aware of it still happening and I'm very aware that one is me <laughs> and it's dying but I'm not and this is the craziest the 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 craziest thing ever. So just to clarify, if someone had found you there and maybe somebody did, I'm and, dead. And I'm, I'm gasping out like a fish. <laughs> you you're thrashing like a fish. Like like yeah. And were you like, unconscious? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so if, some, I, if somebody so, had slapped you in the face, would you have felt it or you're just out of it? Uh, at first, but I'm watching it. So so when we start, I'm like, I'm like dying out. Like, I, I know I'm dead because no, <laughs> I can't get saved at this point. But I'm watching it and I know, like, well, this is it. And But I'm watching it. Not like this is it in it, but I'm watching it. like From well, a that's, distance, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah. Is that, but, but split screen, in it and like like this yeah I, so very I, much in it and very much watching sure, it. and i'm it. like it's done but then i'm like but i'm watching it and that right there connected and then it just it goes into this whole this i would call it curiosity thing yeah um like, like divergent the movie <laughs> when, when the glass is filling up with water and you're going to die and you start to like, but how did, how is this happening? More than the death, you're not, it, this is that, that awareness thing that you can't take off. Instead of the death, I'm dead, I'm dying. That's great. How did I start living? I'm starting questioning. So then it's just like, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I get, res what do you call it? Resuscitated? They, yeah, resuscitated. By back some medical up. personnel or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, Um, They do the whole. They found the, you. Yeah, yeah, and then I had to do all the, the, the things, but I was like, I was there. I was like, that doesn't leave, right? Were, but you were watching this, that too? Did you see them doing resuscitating you? Yeah, but it's exactly like, I, I don't know how to explain. Was there any kind of, a lot of times people when have the, they have these near-death experiences, it's like some voice or some, their father or somebody comes to them and says, it's not your time to go. You, you have to go back. You have something to do. Did you have any kind of sense of that? That was that was felt in me like my intuition I, as the same thing that told me, like, go check your mom. Yeah, that was like, but it's like centered in me. Even if I don't have a body, it's centered. It's like from within you, it comes out and it's known. It's not words because who who is no speaker. It is. It's just a knowing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. People, if, if you could get an insight, like a whole insight, like a whole package of everything. The way to go, where to go, when to go, how to go, it, it just is. Mm -hmm. So I get this feeling like there's something more I'm not done and stuff like that. And it, it was like pulling me or like I'm pulled to the body. So I come back to the body as if I was like, 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 like when you dream, mm. you come out of the dream. <laughs> yeah. So I, I came back into it. But then it's all that stuff I had to go through. Um, but that wasn't even. 
the most profound thing that ever happened to me. Um, that gave me the understanding to teach about death that if you die unconsciously, you will be unconsciously when you die. <laughs> um, so this is why you have to wake up. If you wake up before you're dead, you will know when you die or you don't die when you cross over what to do next. Yeah. Um, that's why I give these teachings like this. I think the but, Buddhists say something like die before you die. In other words, die to the small awareness and into the big awareness before and, your body dies. And and that is that is re, uh that's what enlightenment is. Yeah. When you die before you die. Um but, all right, so you had this suicide attempt. You came back. You probably felt like crap when you first came back because you just tried to kill yourself when you're full of drugs and booze. Yeah, yeah. But, but then you, then you, it's almost like you started a new life at that point. And, and you that's thought, the, yep, yep. That's the start of um, all of this because now it's not. I don't have to go like, 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 like for somebody who wanted to know something, the truth or something. This is like the only clue that the game is not even part of where you're looking from or trying to. Uh, the game has nothing to do with what you're seeking type thing. It's like the only personal clue of my reality that that gave me a higher perspective. Without that, I'll just be in here <laughs> shaking people. What do you know? <laughs> and all these things. But when, once that happened, I knew that there was another level. And I never thought of it like spirit because people talk spirit and you hear ghosts. But as awareness is different. So that started this search. So even more than anything i was like it just like lit this will of god this fire within my spirit to like i will know this like i, I don't even know how to i don't even know how to say it um you, when you know you know like it, it's 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 pulling at it's calling you i don't i don't know how to say it but it is felt like i need to know so i i i I, I just processed every idea that I ever had. And I know that sounds crazy, but to me, they're just like bubble concepts. But I went into what you call samadhi. And this is before the word. This is before meditation. This is before all these things. I just was so curious and stuck. Um, I had read an article. Um, I had read an article that, w that was just breaking my mind it it talked about like the titanic and a book being written before the titanic actually happened but yet the things that happened in the book then it happened right. then it was um it was another it was just like stories like that a person going to the grand canyon um in arizona taking a picture with a camera that wasn't even created yet and then late, years later he goes there and sees this picture with the camera he just bought already there mm. um, stories like that and these are stories and you can see the proof the book is published before the titanic so you can catch it and it just starts to unravel my mind like i don't know what reality is see the reason we don't experience raw reality is because we the belief of i know what this is is gravity it. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Gravity. But what is gravity? You know. No, I don't know. What, what, what is it? Oh, and then that opens up. So this is what started happening. And then there was a lady by, I think her name was Christy. She does energy work. And she was she was talking about the different levels from fear to enlightenment and all the different levels to go up. But then she said, this is what caught me. Um, I had a belief in money that I couldn't get money or things like this, but then I changed my belief and then I got a six figure check. To me at that time, that I'm gonna, good. <laughs> so I'm working hard and you working in a different, like you thought it and that, that just, that didn't fit in no reality I had. Like, pull it towards you. How is that happening? What is it? My mind had no concepts for that. So it made me still. And literally, I went over and this is like when we say the practice of not this, not that. I literally didn't know who I was. And it, I became aware I didn't know who I was. Um, I'm African-American. So I don't have no history. I don't have no culture. I don't have no language. I don't have no God. So for me. This is very, um, very, very strange. Like, I never thought, because you never think about that. 
like you're running on no programs. You don't even like you don't even know. You don't know who you are. You don't know where you come from. You don't know what the capability of, of uh, what this is. You don't know how much power this can put out. You don't know what's capable. And this became the truth, truth to me. I did not know. But then I start to like go through myself. Well, I'm David, but David's something they call you. I'm not David. And it like evaporates. I'm the body. And then no, the body, I already experienced death. No, the body stays, you go. And literally I kept going and I kept going, who am I? Until I experienced, and this is what the self-realization is when we talk about self-realization, I am nothing. Everything that I'm paying attention to has nothing to do with what I am. I thought I was the things I was paying attention to. I, um, I entered being pure awareness. This is when that samadhi starts. Yeah, <laughs> this is a key point. I mean, so you did self-inquiry, and you know, and it, what you just described is actually reminiscent of teachings and teachers and things they've said, like Ramana and people like that. You know, so not this, not this, not this, not this, and you get it. You boil it right down to the essence, and then there's that self-realization, self-recognition, samadhi. Exactly. That's something you did like over a course of months, or was that like in a single sitting where you like the, like the, like the was Buddha like, under the tree? You just sat it, down there and got right into it. Exactly like that, because you can't like like, like when I say I, t I teach people, if you want to know, uh, see, there's a d different levels, and if I tell you we're talking about self-realization, then we'll go into the higher level. But I'm talking about you have to want this more than your reality and nothing in your reality, like literally, and and this is what the words can't convey to a person. Because what you have to do is cut every single thing that you're attached to. So when I was like, I'm a dad, I'm a father. Well, my, the same way I am, am I my dad? I go, uh, am I my dad? No, what he does have nothing to do with me. So am, what I do, does that have to do with my kid? No, they're just them. I'm attached. So I'm not, the, I'm not that and I have to throw it. Literally, you have to cut every single thing that binds you to this reality. But people are scared of that because literally you, you, <laughs> you, you <laughs> everything in the reality that you're buying to makes you you. This is what you say. I'm the job. I'm the person. I'm the politician. I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. I'm the parent. I'm the mom. I'm the dad. I'm the human. I'm the thoughts. I'm the fit. You have to cut all of that. How am I aware of it then? If I can be aware of it, I can't be it. So you cut it and you have to literally let it go. But you don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> so how old are you now? I'm 31. Wow, you're young. And so how old were you when this other thing, when this samadhi thing happened, where you cut through everything? This, this happened in 2015. I started... So I about started three years ago or something? Yeah. Okay. And in those three years, you know, you've started talking about this and dealing, and I want to t have you tell us more about that actual experience, but I just want to ask, um, you know, in the last three years since you've been talking about this and telling people about it and all, have you met anybody else who's been able to do it the way you did, just sort of like with this kind of finality where you just cut right through everything and got right down to the essence? Um... Someone, yeah, this is, a, this is able to be... I'm able to teach it. Like, this is why I started teaching this for real, because I just thought it was me. And I never knew that it was real because I would have never spoke about this ever. Because if you experience <laughs> like you can't talk about it, but you, you're tempted. Like, you got it. You have to sh like it. Bl I don't know. You want to share it. You fill it with light and you can't hold it. But, you know, they won't understand it. But it's still filling you up. So you have to let it out. And it's just. Um, I yeah. used to tell, I told my wife I experienced God and we just left it at that. And the way I am, I'm not a person to just make up. I don't have no reason to make things up. So she, she already knew that something happened to me. Yeah. Um, my friend Terry, I called my brother Terry. Um, I told him there was a little more awakenings to this, but I told him I experienced the absolute and I could tell you these things, but. And he and he knew that I was telling the truth because he knows my character. Like we grew up, so he knows my character. Um, so I went out there to Arizona one time with him, and I broke him out of the thing, and his mind was blown. Like, <laughs> it, it, his mind was blown. He could not grasp it, but he grasped that he could not grasp it, and that was the what he had to grasp. And then I was showing him the stars, 
And it was so much for him. And then, so he had like a full the awakening type thing. But it was a an awakening. It wasn't the, I wasn't like practice at this. I was just like, yeah. Let me let me hit you with the truth so much until you can't deny it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And then what happened was that. So I I realized it was I I could consciously, from experiencing play uh the reverse engineer it and come back with some steps and understandings to dissolve I guess your ego your soul mm-hmm. or not the soul your your <laughs> dissolve your idea that you think you're an idea. Yeah, <laughs> you're able to sort of help people get disentangled. You know, yeah, and it helped get him, him out of the cocoon. It helped him because it, now his mind is able to grasp that he can do anything or be anything, and it's not like an idea. This is an idea until you have the reality. Yeah. So, it, if you could elaborate a little bit more on what your actual experience was when you had that initial samadhi experience, I mean, if you if you try to describe it a little bit more. Okay. So when I talk about my experience, I always have to make it clear that I'm talking about two. It, it's a progression experience, but it's going through self-realization. And that's the when people say I am no thing and then I am everything. Mm-hmm. So and then you got to keep going beyond that. And it's hard to explain because people, there, so what I, did you realize? You realize self-realization. What does that mean? Obviously, I've heard the term, but okay, try to describe so, it to people. All right, so basically I'm like I could like I could even like help you. All right. So you sit down or you don't have to sit down, but it's it's the it's the stillness within you doing this. Mm-hmm. It's like you you're meditating even when you're walking, you're meditating. You are one pointed on the one thing in existence. And what got caught, what caught me in it, in this is that the idea that people things were written before they happened. People they took pictures before people before they even took the picture. People are using their thoughts to pull everything I've been trying to work. I couldn't put that in no, like when you have, uh, I have a son. When you put the little things in the circle, goes in the circle. Yeah. The triangle goes in the triangle. Right. But one piece don't go. I couldn't make it go. Square peg in a round hole. So like my whole, like my whole game's filled out and I have three pieces and I don't know where these pieces go. And I'm trying to, wait, how is this possible? My mind can't get past things because of what I experienced. So I really, like I had no way I could formulate my theory of everything to fit this. No way could I understand this. So it it caused me to be one minded, one focus. So even when I was moving around, my body was doing what it was doing, but I was like focused inwardly. What the heck? What? How is this possible? What am I then? What? What? Like, what's really going on with me then? So then it starts to focus inward. First, so the first key to this is concentration. Can you be concentrated inwardly even when things are moving? Just focus inwardly on one thing. What am I? Hey, what is really going on? So it, it focused my like inner eye to become aware of this. So then I'm starting throwing everything. I'm not David. I'm not my body. My body will go. I'm not my thoughts. My thoughts change. Who is the one aware of the thoughts? I'm not my relationships. I'm not the people. I'm not this. I'm not that. And I'm just going on, on and on and on. And it's like I'm empty and everything I think I could believe I am. And this is basically my mind, how I think. All my marbles are concepts. And I'm pulling this one. No, not this. <laughs> not this. And then it gets crazy. It starts to go to groups. Because then I start to connect all this. Um, if I'm not the body, anything that goes with the body, we can throw out. So I'm not any smell, any sight, any touch, any, um, any taste, any feelings. So all of those, anything I've ever touched, anything I've ever tasted, anything like a group, <laughs> throw all that out. So then we get, I'm an energy, but who's aware of the energies? And when they change, what are you? Where are you? I'm not that. And all that goes. Who's the thoughts? All that goes until I became, I'm my mind. Who's aware of the mind? Who is talking and who is listening? And then it became something so aware. Why am I talking to myself and listening to myself as if I'm not the self? Then it splits. Who's talking to me? Who's the one aware of that? And then it gets like 
my mind. <laughs> like I catch the, the 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 one pretending, and then I'm like, so what is that? If I'm not the mind, everything I know is my mind, but I'm not the mind. We throw away the mind, and what's left is just you are pure awareness. But since you do this in a reality, and it was like over nine hours just being, like I'm moving and stuff, but I'm not, like I'm staying on this in, inwardly. So then what happens is nothing's left, and literally you're only left. So what happens is I, it's like if you open your eyes for the first time, when you see your reality, your reality is not a known, your reality is literally you. Because you realize the only one that has ever experienced you is you. Every sound, every taste, every touch, every single thing was you. Every problem is the mirror effect. You when you put your belief on it, it was not like that. And then you experience what you put on it. The one that experiences anger is the one that creates the anger, puts it on something, gets mad and experiences it. It's all a mirror effect right back at you. So I was able to get out the mirror and realize that. And then I became everything, like everything, everything, um, because you already are everything. You're not a body. So if you believe you're a body, you have to believe you're the floor that the body is on. So if you believe there's a floor, you got to believe you're the ground. Um, the ground gives you food. So part of you is the food. Um, what makes the food? The rain. If, you, if you're the ground, you're the rain because it's the whole system. So every literally every uh, Everything in my reality got connected to oneness. It is one, all of it. It's not a thought, though. It, it, like, that's why I can help people see it, because it's not, I'm not thinking. I'm happening within your mind right now, within your heart right now. I'm happening within you. Um, and you're happening within me. We're in each other. It, it all is. <laughs> hey, I have to tell you something funny. Somebody just posted something on Facebook. It just popped up in the corner here. It said, they said, somebody named Lori, she said, Holy shit, Rick, he's so good. <laughs> so I thought you'd like that. So she, oh, said, yeah. she said, David, phew. <laughs> so you have a fan out there. You got a new fan. <laughs> um, we're all reflections. Um, this is what I call people my reflections because literally I am you, you are me. It is all. And this is how easy. When you know, you know. And if someone knows, you can tell that they know because the only thing they can point to is you. You are it. You're it. I yeah. can't give you nothing. I'm going to give you what you already are. Um, but the more people know who they are, the more they know what we all are. So this is the freeing thing of this. Um, if you wake up, we all wake up. Um, but that's just, <laughs> that's, that's self-realization. So this is self-realization. And realizing everything that ever happened to me is me. Who's mad? <laughs> who made up that? You, what's mad, an idea, a concept. So who's holding that and putting an experience to it? Me, I'm doing all this to myself. I set myself up in myself. So once you know that, you're able to be at peace with everything, all the beings in the world. And um, this goes beyond physical. Um, even in my dreams, like nightmares, I, had a, I have a dream that some monster is trying to get me. I am so self-aware of who I am. Even in the thing, I feel compassion for the monster. I hug the monster in my sleep because I know it was me. And if I was in that predicament, I would need love. So therefore, you like all the traps get you get out of all the traps out of this. Um, but your greatness becomes the trap. <laughs> This is at that level because now I am God. <laughs> ah. It is God. Ah. And then this is the trap that people get caught into um, spiritually. When we talk about spirituality, the more you're giving up, the more you're becoming. No one thinks to give up everything and whatever is left is the pure experience of everything. You're never going to keep anything. So if you're thinking you're going to keep anything, you're slowing yourself down. But thinking you're going to keep it. So you're 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 stagnant. You're slow. If you know that it comes and it goes, I'll die one day and I don't know when that is. I better get it. I better enjoy it all. You get in and you enjoy it all. You lose wives, houses, you lose cars, you lose your life. You lose. Ah, yes. But did you live life? And and that's what it's about. Um, Everything becomes a reflection of you. So the same way you use samadhi to um, experience oneness. This never stops. So when I see you, if I keep looking at you, I will start to see God in you. Or I see God in you, but I'm trying not to focus it. Or we'll fall in some type of love. If you look somebody in the eye, you'll see yourself looking at yourself. 
if you're self-realized, if you know what you are, all of this is you. But then you, who gave you this? I think some people get so into this. I am. That is the I am. This is what God is. I am self-realization. But if you don't get caught in it, you enter. Um, it's it's another level. Like so, th- I break it down like this. Um, first we have the duality. Everybody's duality. Me versus you. My stuff and your stuff. This is how it is. And then we transcend into the uh, what we call oneness. All is one. I am you. You are me. We are one. But then beyond that is the nonness. <laughs> um, and th- this is no. <laughs> it just killed me trying to think about some language to put. To- there is nothing right when you can give up being aware. And this is when you got to just you got to have a drive for this. Every single thing. The way I try to convey this is. Put every future life, every past life in this life, everything you will ever be in your existence right here, right now and jump, fully jump into the dark. And it it will even. Like even your awareness, the way I experience this is my awareness as if it went into itself. Like evaporated into itself, so I unbecame. But see, these words don't convey that. How, how can okay. you? That makes sense. There's so a I, there's a thing in the Bhagavad Gita which says it's like a tortoise drawing its legs within its shell. You know. Exactly how it is. Yeah. I, I never knew that. <laughs> exactly like that. So you go within yourself, but you're not. You're not this anymore. You're everything. You're just awareness, though. But awareness going into awareness. And then that's when it happened. The, there is a God. There is a light. But this is the... <laughs> so when this it, first happened to you, did you kind of lose it again and then you had to rediscover it? Or did it stick with you? Um, it, <sighs> when they say, those who know do not say... And those who say do not know what they're trying to say is that it's it's you can't talk it because it's like saying yes and no on every single question you say. So if you say all negatives, all negatives. If you say all positive, all positive. Is it that? No. Mm. (laughs) So it's it's caught in between yes and no is and is not. But you you see, I can't even (laughs) articulate it, but. I can tell you what it feel like. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> like, so if you want to experience what what I call God realization, you have to even give up your self realization of being pure awareness and all that. So we, I don't know how to say you give up. You just do have to have the desire to know what who created you. So first we want to know what am I? Then we understand what we are. But who created such a magnificent thing? Like it's beyond. It's beyond. It's like if I give you heaven and everything in it, can you turn away heaven and say, but who created heaven or would you get lost in heaven? Mm -hmm. So if you can not get lost in heaven, which is a crazy thing, um, you implode. You don't implode, but you go inward even deeper to unmanifested. And what is there? The way I experience it is like as if I went in and then a, a, a sun was just on me. The way, the way it, as if the sun was right here, literally on your neck. And like, you know how you get chills? It's known, it's right there. And you know, so your awareness, you don't have, I don't, I'm killing this. No, you're doing good. As, as a matter of fact, you may not know this, but a lot of the things you say are things that have been said for centuries in these spiritual traditions. Like, for instance, the thing about heaven. You know, some traditions say, well, it's really hard for angels to get enlightened or even want enlightenment because heaven is so wonderful per- it's per- that they, they don't want to close their eyes, you know. Uh, and you actually have to somehow go beyond that. But it's, it can be so alluring that you don't want to go beyond it or you don't even think of going beyond it. It's is that because it, look, look, people think that um, when I tell people to enter the absolute, you have to pass a guardian. What I mean by that is if fear rules your life, 
you will have to face whatever fear that is. Like if you believe that there's a devil, if you believe in that, those things, those things will manifest because they're of your mind. Your mind is trying to keep you keep you there. So then when you if you go past fear, your mind plays this last trick, give you heaven. Mm-hmm. You never prepared for heaven. Oh, I get to do anything, <laughs> everything, all of us be everything. And whatever you can conceive of everything is even beyond that because it's infinity, everything you being. <laughs> the words get different. Um, but you're very aware that you are everything in existence, everything, every moment, every taste, every touch. All of this is happening within you anyway, but you just get to experience it. But that can catch you because how is this? So we go into the, um, the unbeing. Man, it's as if the sun went right here and you turn around. The thing about this is that it is the most scariest thing that can ever scare you. And this is the greatest thing. To find that the absolute is real, you could never imagine that. <laughs> it's, it's, you cannot fathom that. But it breaks you. Literally, it breaks anything else. Everything else that was going to get you to be not what you are, it, it, it strips every single thing away. I'm going to start crying if I keep thinking about it. You can cry. <sighs> because, nah, you don't understand. I'll start, <laughs> I won't be able to speak. It'll make the video even more popular if uh, you cry. <laughs> let me put the tears up. <laughs> See what it is. <laughs> nah, but, but literally because, look, As a human, you're taught that you're unworthy of things. You're taught that you lack. You're taught that you're broken. You're taught that you're missing out. You're taught that you're you're taught that the judgment on you. We all walk around unknowingly with this judgment, this grudge, the weight on the world of I gotta be perfect. I gotta do perfect things. Um, I'm not good enough. What about the things I did last year? What about the things I did? All these things. This never goes away. The mind doesn't let it go. Think about what you call memory is just hate myself, hate myself, hate myself, all like that. But when we get to the absolute, with one word, but it's not a word. I'm just I'm trying to give you some way to communicate this. Through every cell, you don't have cells. <laughs> I'm trying to say, <laughs> it is known through your being in every single level. Because like I said, if you put your past, your future of everything into one and jump, Through that one, that perfection of being pure awareness, it will heal, it will fix every single thing. Um, You are liberated. Enlightened is because what God is as an experience, if I can give you an experience, is if every son in the universe got together and then you jumped into that and that was pure experience of pure bliss, pure love, pure joy, um, names for things you can't even name, um, happenings and non-happenings and er- just everything in existence compiled up into one sun and that sun is who we all are we all stream out of that sun and we all go back um if you knew this you will be free because no man no no demon no angel nothing in existence could bind you because what those demons those angels are is the same thing that you are you literally become liberated because you enter the light god is the light and all is god and it's 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 your birthright. <laughs> mm. That's the point of this. Like the way you feel that I don't know the point of this and it sucks and you in pain and it hurts. There is something gathering all of that just for you. It is multiplied over and over. And the way I tell people is like jump in pure ecstasy and it's time a million now. Now times 10 million. Now 100 million. Now a billion. Now 100 billion. Now a zillion. Now 100 zillion. And realize when you just realize that this thing is not going to stop, it, you lose it. Because what's the point of counting when you can't count and it's still going as if it just started? It is everything. Um, it's, it's God. People don't use the word God. This is because you don't know God. <laughs> you don't know what you are. You don't know it has never left you. This is the love of true love, um, non-attached. And when I see the sun every day, so I'm always taking pictures of the sun. Exactly like that. It has nothing to do with you. It's still shining for you because your heart is beating with it. It is breathing you. It is thinking you. And it, 
you you will be you, this is what you will return to and all of this drama and all these things all these things you care about that's limiting holding you back the idea of an ego or not an ego trying to be good or bad all of this rent is it doesn't matter if you're good or bad or evil all you know is the light that's it so you are it sets you right um because you it's like a drug <laughs> it, it like like I can't wake up without thinking this. I can't go to sleep without thinking this. I go to in my dreams and then I'm trying to ask, y'all know where the light's at? <laughs> like, hey, it, it overwhelms you everything. So it's not like I voluntarily want to be a, a spiritual teacher. I just wanted the truth happen to find it. And now this is this catch. <laughs> if you know the light, what else you can talk about? Everything. Shallowness is it doesn't no everything. Let's talk about everything every day, all day. And that's who you are. Um then then you're enlightened, not by oh, I am enlightened and I studied it. You, you have no choice because your freedom is enlightenment. Who you be? If I'm walking around running, if I get naked and run on the hill, in the expression in which I do it, the light of me doing it, my presence itself becomes that light. Um even bad things become blessings. You just sit still, you watch it, I'm about to lose everything. And literally, um, that's after. Um, because you, you, it's weird. Because th- when they say a wisdom, human has seen knowledge. If I can't label it, I don't know it. But if you go to the wisdom of I am sight, where, where you speak from is your heart. There's no thought process no more. Because you know it all ends well. It all is perfect. Um, we're having this conversation, this interaction, because it was already manipulated for it to be. And from this happening, sprouts more happenings that will either talk to people in the world or give people the light. Like, it spreads. Um and it's not a you don't own this. You are this. This is this is why when people try to obtain it, how do you obtain letting go? <laughs> the more you put into you, the more you, you're hurting yourself. Yeah, but I really know what it is. But it's not a theory. Yeah, I know, but I'll find out some more. <laughs> then you just be. Um, so then I seen the effect of me just being. It makes people it, it breaks them out of the dark. Literally. You are it. <laughs> you are walking light. You don't know why. You don't know how. It just is. Like, like me and you can do the exact same things, right? Or even me and me. Me before and me after. If I do, if I mimicked and said the same thing, did the exact same things, two different outcomes. Because of what is moving me, what is saying me, what is beating me, living me, it is in full control now. Because give, when they say, um, let thy will be done. Who else will is there? Who else is here but the one? It's all the one. You can iron this all out and it's just... And then blessings and blessings and then, <laughs> and then the crazy parts of stuff start happening. <laughs> but hey, reality will start to literally play with you like a kid. Like, like make you laugh and different type of things like... This becomes dangerous because you'll say something, then it'll happen. Like, happen, happen. Um, you'll start to... i give you an example. Um, I, was make, I was going to the uh, park the other day. I had my backpack. And then I was thinking, like, it's so crazy how everything is perfectly divine order. Because it's impossible for you to go somewhere and meet the right person. When there's seven billion different situations, and even more than that, because seven billion is giving you a thought of it. It could be however, man, you don't really know. So how do those things happen? And straight when I was thinking about this, I ran into my friend that I met in the military um, from seven years ago. Like I had to be on that hill right at that time, and if I would have came earlier or not, I would have missed them. And I got right in contact. And I was like, exactly like that. <laughs> it, people see it and then they idolize it. But you can't idolize these things because it's not like you. If you, if you copy me, you don't become any human. It's nothing human. Like, yeah, you got to see that you are the spirit and let the spirit be. And then that's how you fully get everything that you are. Um, 
your child. The child in you was the perfection of you. It didn't have, oh, I got to do this to get profit. How's my profit margin? Who's going to like it? Who's going to? No, it was action. You seen a cat. You're after the cat. And that's what you did fully with your heart. And that's that joy. But doing things in that joy, it brings success with you. It brings joy with you in everything you do. And you're not really doing that. That's how you, everything is done by not being, not you doing it. <laughs> you just show up. Like, what's up? Man, you're making me feel good. How are you doing this? Oh, because there's no pressure. There's no gravity on you. When I'm around you, I'm looking at you. I want to be interested in the things that you are. You become a mirror, a perfect mirror. And when you look in the mirror, if the mirror is clean or been clean going through all this, <laughs> it reflects back the light that is you. Like, I'm normally you. <laughs> and that's made people, that, that's the light for people. Not like... I have been through things and you'll never make it. <laughs> no, because I made it, you're definitely going to make it. That's what changes um the teaching, I guess. Sharing love, being love, that's it. Be love. What would love look like in your capacity? And whatever you think that is, be that with no holdbacks and you will have the perfect life that you always dreamed of. Because this is how God did it. It made you perfect. Oh, you're just playing human. That's some other thing. <laughs> that has nothing to do with God's plan. What you are innately pulled to. Oh, bugs or, oh, look at trains or, hmm, I wonder how the bugs are. <laughs> whatever it is, whatever your gift is, if you go all the way in it, it will become one of one because you're one of one in the one. That's the beauty of this. Individuality in the oneness you get to be you and you get to be god people who jump and forget the other you gotta do like this the i'm perfect with it i'm happy it doesn't take anything it doesn't you just be when you be right here we don't need words you know that i know and i know that you know and i know that we are so that is it it's a silent conversation it's just it's felt and that's always telling my on my video. Do you feel me? If you're processing and analyzing me, you will not feel me. Um, it's energy before the word. So we got to lose the words and feel the energy. People get caught up on the word. Did I say it right? Did you feel what I was trying to point to? That's really what it is, because the words ain't really real. It's A E I O U. Um, and clicks and sounds. God's not a clicker or a sound, and God is, but first you got to let it go to get it back. So then you complete. Um, you can even be bad, but you won't be bad as, like, I'm evil and I'm winning. You can just be bad, like, I'm going to destroy it all. You're free. You wouldn't even destroy it all because it's you, but you're free. Who cares what they're saying? They won't understand me. I'm one of one. I don't understand me. How can I get someone else to understand me? You don't even think about those things no more. You just... You in the live now, right here, right now, and it is. I only know that I am, and I know that there is God that is. That's all you need to know. Who, who, you, got the, you got the coach in the game, the light. <laughs> it's nothing else. Um, and then you plan in whatever your divine destiny is. Because now I go around the world finding my um, reflections, waking them up. But not waking them up like, you need to get up and be better. Walking around being up makes people want to, I want to be like you. You seem to get, be happy. <laughs> All right, do this. <laughs> it's simple. It's all about stillness. Nice. You're on such a nice roll, I didn't want to interrupt and, and say yeah. anything. You're just really... Just getting in streams. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Love it. Um, <laughs> You gave me some nice uh, points that we could discuss, and I think you've covered some of them. Um, but let's let's dig into a few of them. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that you thought you'd want to discuss is the dark side of awakening and enlightenment. What's the dark side of those things? The dark side of this is believing that it will fix you. Because um, people, I like, like I literally. Te if you talk about enlightenment, first of all, if you're talking about enlightenment, that's questionable to the ego. Like, ah, uh, who knows if he is or not? So. What, what, what's crazy about it is that 
if we can get past that and you and you can continuously try to help someone liberate somebody or or even teach this, this is why you can't really teach someone that isn't seeking it themselves because what they do is they make up some they make up something like <laughs> when i'm enlightened then i'll be ready to start my career when i'm enlightened oh then i'll have a magic power when i'm enlightened then i'll fix my relationship when i'm enlightened Oh, I won't even have to do it. It would be <laughs> like, like oh, I would be a guru. I'll put myself like I get all these powers. It's not like that. That's that's one thing I don't like. That the more we say is very difficult, the more people make it difficult in their minds. When it's actually the most simplest thing. Before you think what is happening, nothing. That's exactly what is happening, nothing. <laughs> it's simple. But people make this thing, oh yeah, I've seen an enlightened being. They, people put all these things on gurus and mark the face up and all this. So you, you come in there and you're a human to act up and be like, oh, this is one. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you see the president, it's only a person with a name. It's not like he knows more and he has a power, I'm the president. It's just a do. Everybody's just the same. Um, but when we start to idolize these things, put people above ourselves, we 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 got to get through that. <laughs> um, and from it, the dark side of it is that you can't stay in the light. This is one thing: you can't stay in the light. Um, it becomes like a drug. And but this. Uh, uh, it's hard to talk about the light. <laughs> when you experience the light, it will consume your whole being. Everything in your reality will be pulled towards this. But you cannot stay in the light because it's absolute. You won't be able to function. Like, I won't be able to move this because I will be absorbed, literally absorbed into it. Um, even if it starts to take part of like, your life energy if you stay into the absolute. Um, but the thing is, is that so you have to come back down. This is the it's like a, any drug. After you get super high, you got to deal with being super low. That right there is the most depressing stage of your whole awakening. Um, I thought I was depressed. I thought I was um, low and depressed before that. After that, it's this is when the spiritual practices have to come in this is when you have to start getting in nature and staying in presence staying in these things this is why it's all you have to balance all of this because you will know that there's the truth you won't be able to convey it you will know that everyone else in this world is suffering and you will be able to feel their suffering because the self-realization never leaves you still are everything everything is but when you go back into that you open your heart that what what you call pain is the only pain that ever existed. So you know that your pain is the closest thing you can understand uh, to anybody's pain. So you realize how bad it was for you is how bad it is right now for everybody on this planet. And that right there is the dark side of this because you you, you connected too many dots. You cannot like you cannot stop looking at the dots you connected. You know it is very much there. So when we talk about Man, it, this is what can split your, your being because you, you see that we live in like caveman times when people, people will not acknowledge a person for their color. That's like having an eye color that, oh no, your eyes are the wrong color. We don't, we don't get, and that's literally how crazy that is. People will kill for that. Um, realizing that people put people's intellect down. Every single thing is like being stunt. This is why you got to know the whole system to understand it all completely. It's like when you see slavery, we talk about putting women down. We talk about like even religion telling you, you, you will go to hell and all these things. We don't never ask where did these things come from? All of this is revealed to you. But then you see how maddening the world is. You see all of your reflections living in hell, dealing with that, um, isolated by themselves, going through the same thing, um, the the gift and the pain is you to experience it, realize it, and then wake up, and then you realize that from your personal experience. Now you can go back to heal the pain that um, you experienced. I, I can't do something I never experienced, and this is what people need to realize. They've been shown so much things on TV. 
wars and, and mm-hmm. hunger and things that they just put this on themselves and it makes them feel like they can't move. But you can ha- actually help your situation. If you were overweight, if you were depressed, if you um, deal with anxiety, if you whatever you personally, your personal demon was, if you overcome it, now this is why you're in the game now. So now I'm in the game to fight, help fight depression. Why? Because I experienced it. I know what it's like to be on that other side, literally. And that right there gives a connection to actually make change. Not someone I studied it. <laughs> As I said, the theory of studying it, oh yeah, here's a pill. But do you know what these pills are doing inwardly to me? It says, <laughs> see, only until we take the pill and now let's see. See what I mean? You understand. So, this is the whole you got to come all the way back around to the circle, go to the light, come back to the ground and not just I'm going to a cave. I just need to get back to the light. People get addicted to even heaven or the self-realization. They get addicted to I just want to be oneness. They don't want to be in it, too. So you got to the dark side of that is you got to learn how are you going to put all this and still maintain your sanity in this world because I can feel your pain even when you're trying to deny it because the way you act the way you your mannerisms and the way you'll speak it'll be a flow and then it'll change it'll drop or it'll go high or it'll drop it'll be like oh yes I'm I'm David my name is this um what's your favorite color um green (laughs) you see it'll drop it'll be felt but you got to be crystal clear to understand this but until we acknowledge that dark side, we're going to have a lot of people lost and putting in, um, reti- what's those homes? Retirement homes? Uh, not even retirement. Well, like you- care home. Oh, mental yeah. institutions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you can experience it and then you get people saying, I'm Jesus. Things like that. But they could be halfway to the truth. But until you like, you got to fully ground this back to the, like, the whole circle of this. If you can do that, you can walk around in the world, but not of the world, helping the world, realizing you are the world. Um, That's the whole point. So because like, what would be the point? Oh, I'm God. Oh, and just get back to (laughs) it. There's a story about Ram Dass. You know who Ram Dass is? Um, Yeah, yeah, I know Ram Dass. Yeah, yeah. His brother was in a mental institution and um, because he his brother thought he was God. And so Ram Dass went to visit him and he said, you know, the reason you're she said, I think I'm God, too. But the reason you're here in this institution and I'm not is that you think you're the only one who's God and I think everybody's God. Exactly. That's the key right there. The ego, the brain locks you up. And that's the thing. The the determining factor is, do you see this for everybody or do you just still say a me? If there's a me there, then you're still you need work. But if you say we are God, God is all, all is God. Oh, you're complete. Um, you should have a way, but you can tell because people should have a way of explaining this. Or if, if they can't verbalize it or articulate it, they should be like, let me show you, close your eyes. And then they can get you to what they're talking about. But we got to be open. Um, this is how they explain enlightenment. This is how he's experiencing it. This is how it is. We have to be open that it's not like one thing, one size fits all. We have to like one of one. Um, if a fish experiences enlightenment, he's going to do something in the water. If a bird does it, he's flying, <laughs> doing flips. And if you're doing it, you may not be a bird or a fish. And if we can understand it like that, you, it, it's the full thing. That's what, it, It's all about pulling it all back together, one. Um, every, every great guru, Buddha, Jesus, I am you, you are me. When we see Jesus getting hung... Buddha's in the state of he's the nail, he's the cross, he's the person, he's the one. It's no one there. But you're like, yeah. (laughs) Forgive them for they don't know what they do. They don't realize that they taken away the light in their lives. People get on the concept of Jesus. No, Jesus was a concept. The Buddha was a concept. It's not like that. There are beings showing you that there is so much more here. You should highlight that part. And come for that game. I um, heard you say earlier that it was sort of like spiritual practice became useful for you after this awakening experience to kind of process and begin to work through all the stuff that was getting stirred up, if, if I understood you correctly. And I've yeah. heard in some of your videos saying that you, you start your day with like 20 minutes of just really concentrated gratitude. 
gratitude, 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 and then you you also meditate a couple hours a day. Um, mm -hmm. Is all that still the case? And and um, you know, do, what do you advocate or encourage people to do along those lines? You got to do you like. There ain't no way, but your way is the way. Um, what I do is that since I experienced death, I know that this could come at any second. I'm, I'm like, you don't lose this type of awareness. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm here. I arrived again. So I'm here to play round two. I can get better. I can get more. I can have these things. So for you to have more, you already got to appreciate the stuff you already have. Um, so what's the most precious thing that you have? I am my life. I am. My mind is still here. I'm still able to process these things. My health is still here. Um, I still have a voice or I'll be writing this down. I still have a mind and a way to write this down. Like you got to get lost in this appreciation and, and it stumbles into your day because it sets the way your consciousness sees reality. So when you start and you just pause, like soon as you wake up, my first thought is, thank you, God, I'm here again. Round two. And then more. I am thankful for whatever. It just starts shooting out. Whatever I'm thankful for. For this beautiful day, for the sunshine, for the dark. I wake up in the morning, morning. It's like four or something, three sometimes. I'm thankful for the silence because in the silence you see the gift of everything. I'm thankful for the bird, the bird giving me a beautiful song. I'm thankful for the wind, the spirit that moves all that is in all that never is able to be caught. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the rain that is in me. I drink clouds. I'm thankful for the trees, the other side of my lungs. I'm thankful for the planet. I have a home. I'm thankful for the solar system that makes my it just goes and grows. And then you wake up or you get up and then you just like you in that vibration. You just sit in there. You sit and marinate in it. And that's like just practices. Um, But depending on I don't have to do any of that. It still is. But that's my my respect. Somebody gave me a car and I can go do anything, drive it around, break it, crash it, build something with it, all these things. Um, and then they gave you an earth and then they gave me seven billion reflections. Then they gave me the awareness to know that within every single being is God potential to be everything. So if everybody's Einstein, if everybody's the Buddha, everybody's Jesus, you see on that level the potential of humanity, we all can wake this up and the world is going to transform. So you see this and you know it and you know your part in this. To be me is to cause this. I'm thankful. I could have had a job. <laughs> right? This is it's talking the truth to people and changing lives. This is the it's, it's perfect. Like if you could say, what would you want to do if, if you had to do anything? And what I am is what I do. And I am that I'm thankful for it. I remember there was a time when I hated my life. I'm in the military. I'm in the store. I'm in this and this job. So we always do this. I want more. I wish I had a better situation and things like that. But when you have it, do you catch it? So I catch mine in the now every time. Frees me up, sets me in the right mood. Um, when I'm out in the world, now people talking, even if someone's talking, whatever, you're so within that spot. <laughs> You send them love. You send them compassion. You understand, like, hey, you can't even see that you're here. <laughs> and nothing bothers you. Um, and then just find it, find it, like, if you're depressed, staying out in nature. I go skating. Uh, I'm staying at the beach. I'm always walking on a trail. Um, you have to get your mind to where it can see the open sky because this is when your intelligence is going to open up. Look into the clouds and start to, like... For, like, look, no one looks up. We're just all on the ground looking at you, uh, my job. Look up and, and like see the amazement. Go out and um, to the beach and see how far the horizon is. How deep does the ocean go? How far is the moon? Look into the galaxy. Um, open. <laughs> open makes you open. Nice. Um, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a job? Or I heard you say at one point that you worked as a, an electrician. Do you still do something like that? Uh, I gave all that up. Um, because of this. How do you support your family? Um, I don't even understand. It's, how would you say it? I created a business out of this, and that provides. 
Um, like talking to people and, and consulting them or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I guess it's like, I don't know. That's why I call it a, um, I don't, what, what, what do you call this? I just help people. In my perspective, I just help people. And so it's like coaching. Coaching, yeah, yeah. That's one word. So enlightenment coaching type thing. Mm -hmm. So kind of like that. Just make a business and stuff. I, um, even like my clothing right here, I made clothing lines and then that start to go. But then I just, literally I just quit it all um, to test. It, it, I don't know how to say this. Um, if you walk with God, God will walk with you. But I'm so aware of that. That What do you want to do? It, it's like no compromising on your goal. If this job is getting in the way of your goal and your dreams, don't go to this job. And this is the only truth that you can know. And if you say what's going to happen after, before, you're not working with God. If you say this ain't me, cut it, I'm leaving and give it all to God, you move like this. But what, what happens is that like... Um, I, 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 let me see. How do you oh, say? That's beautiful. It? I mean, it reminds me of um, that thing, that beautiful thing that Jesus said. You know, see ye not the lilies of the field; they they neither toil nor sow or something. They don't prepare for tomorrow. But even Solomon, in all his glory, was not adorned as one of these. You know, and so mm -hmm. if God will take care of, you know, a little flower like that, well, certainly He's going to take care of you. I mean, it, the same one that gave you the day will take care of you through the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but I'm having a hard time to explain it because it ain't it's, it's not explainable. It's a it's awareness thing. Um, you have to and this is part of the waking up going through this. Um, me and my wife, we already through through internet money basically like even like stocks or setting certain things up, you can make income um, over the internet. Mm -hmm. So having that is it was actually frees me my intellect about that but testing it last year was the test of this will god will we sink or swim and and nobody like god is god so if god is god let's play this all right if god is god god should be able to provide anything and everything i needed as i need it and this is something i must know so how do you know anything you got to test it so I cut going to a certain job. I cut going to doing certain things and I sit still and I just did what I love. That start to make income. But it is it's even crazier because. I call it magic money. Like, like literally, well, I guess we're going to lose my truck. This this comes up in reality. Well, I guess I'll sell my truck at the eighth on the fifth. You get a job or something or you you randomly in the mail. We overpaid or you overpaid for this or that. And then two thousand dollars unplanned perfectly what you needed. And then you start to see it. The more you become aware of that. You can just rest in that. And then it just like allows you to be. <laughs> but it's not like it's not like denial. I still do things, but it does. It takes care of what it is, I guess. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. That's good. <clears throat> um, we could dwell on any one of these points. You know, we could go on for half an hour talking about each one, but I <laughs> want to move through several other ones. Um, you've kind of talked about the difference between self-realization and God-realization. You keep touching upon that. Is there any like fairly concise comment you want to make about that? Because I mean, there's a lot of spiritual people who don't even believe in God. You know, they they just sort of can, they can relate in terms of self-realization. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're a pure consciousness, or maybe they they think of it in terms of you are nothing. You know, there is no personal self, and there's just an emptiness. And you know, realization involves knowing that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but then they might say there is no such thing as God. The the universe is is random and and accidental and arbitrary and and uh, that kind of thing. And to me, that's kind of a very half baked spirituality. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, there's there's so much richness if you take it the next step, as you have been implying in what you've been saying. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me think. What would I say? It, it's kind of like not, you you can't really say anything about that because like this is like if you're a person 
if we even talk about self-realization, to even get into self-realization, actually, you have to get into that to open yourself to the possibility of God realization. Because if you're talking about the self, you don't even believe that you are everything or you don't even know what you talk. Yeah, like, you, you don't can't... know who you are. How are you going to know what God is yeah. or anything? Yeah. Is? How are you yeah, going to know what an apple is? Is it right there? That's how easy that is. Like, how can you know if you don't even know who you are? Um, if you experience who you are, this should be like a highlight. Like, yeah, I felt there was some more. Because if you can still go, you're not there. If, if you can be like, if you still can ask a question, even in oneness, who is the one aware? I am the one aware of all. Every single thing is one. It's one thing. But then you or one thing and one no thing. But it's just the most. It just goes with the way your consciousness has to get there. If you're on a road pulling at a string to realize who you are and then you pop out and then you realize you're nothing, the string, if the string is still there to ask the question, you're not done yet. Until you cannot ask a question because all answers will be given and given and given. Then you don't want no more. And still, we just started. It will flood you and flood you. Um, so what I would say is that you're just showing your colors. Anybody who says something like that, they're just showing their level. Mm. It, it's not nothing to argue because how can you argue? It's relevant that, for them at their stage of development or their stage of experience. You just have to send them love because <laughs> it's not even a fair fight if you try to break this down to them because they don't know who they are. You can ask them that question, then who are you? And then here we go. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's literally like a science. If you experience this, you could just step by step Walk yourself out of creation, be out of creators, and then go inward, and then there you are. But this is oblivious if you if you never even did any soul searching. Yeah, it's easy being a bleacher's like, oh, he should have made that shot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's see you make it. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, we could, this is another point we could go on about, but I'm gonna just keep moving through some other ones that you, you sketched out for me. One is millennials and self-realization. What do you have yeah. to say about that? Um, when we talk about realization, we got um, everybody refers to the books, right? Um, the Buddha, like when I even use, I use um, I only use concepts that your mind has already uh, absorbed, so you can understand where I'm pointing at. When I say the Buddha. I'm I'm directing you in. Okay, if I know the Buddha, what was the Buddha about? And that just like saves time. Um, when I say Jesus, um, when we say God, you realize every word is a loaded word that already comes with its pre-applied everything. When we talk about today's awakening, what is happening is that the language is not switching for people to realize it. They're still stuck in the paradigms. Like I, I deal with this all the time. So if I say God, you already assume you know what God is. But then I say Oh, but you don't know who you are. And assuming God is not what I'm saying, they'll hear it, but they can't get over that word. This is why people don't like using words like God and and Brahmin and, and things like certain things, because it already comes with so much whatever baggage. Yeah. So so but even if you're see, if you actually experience and you're like, no, I'm talking about God, it's still it's still like smurs, uh put a smudge on the mirror. They can't really see it past that cultured. Um, that condition. But what so does this we, have to do with millennials? You, you said uh, I'm, I'm going to tie it you, in. You get into that. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So, so when we talk about millennials, you got to realize that the people that teach millennials don't realize that millennials within like two years, like my son could have absorbed more information about the whole world, about all these things. Like my 10 year old son, he told me about every crystal. He was just naming them this, 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 and this property. And I'm like, how do you even know? It's just like my mind is blown. How do you know this? Oh, I watched the show that talks about the crystal. So I, I, I did this, and then I looked it up, and then I got interested in it. And now I know them all. And he's like 10. So that's more knowledge. So when we talk about if we don't change the practices of, of yesterday and to, to, to fit the kids or the people of today, will always have this culture gap. You got to realize like we're a world culture. If you can look back, if we go back like a couple hundred years, even I would have been in a cage. So if we go back a thousand years, that mind frame in which they operate and talked about it like, is like, it, it's wrapped around the culture. Everybody, because it used to be your culture, your culture, like 
everybody used to be their culture, not mixed. But now that we mixed it, we have to have a different type of teaching that is exactly from the truth because or you you like you water it down. We're we're their minds are going higher, and if their truth is not reaching their mind, we're going to have an uh, imbalance. Uh, imagine a a, a fifteen year old that knows about nuclear science, but <laughs> he can't catch that he is. You have like it's like making super weapons. So we have to come back to the time, and it's not a look type thing. Um, I feel like enlightenment is 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 even in mainstream. Um, is marketed to be an enlightened person. That 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 sounds oh, it's just just a person that knows who you are. See, when we see all these gurus and gold and all this and and with the all this and that as an, an, an as um as a youth, you look up and then you take in the whole. Oh, that'll never be me. Ah, oh, he sat there and meditated for this. Oh, I'll never get that. So what this does, if we want the world to change, we have to invest in the ones that's going to change the world. We, we, we can't fix what's going out to get what's new. We have to find the truth and teach the truth to the youth so they know the truth already. Like they're not programmed all the way. And then that right there is the switching of the, 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 the dark to the light. It's, it's, it's one generation type thing. So since you have a 10 year old son and you probably and he has a bunch of friends whom you probably know, are you kind of optimistic uh, when you look at the way he functions uh, that, you know, there's going to be a whole new crop of, of kids yeah, that are going to make a theme. difference? Yep. Yeah, because they're um, because they have the Internet, all their friends, they're connected to their friends on the Xbox with their friends. Right. Like and, and it goes beyond color, race. It, I'm playing with my friend in London. We play at a certain time because his hours and my hours and it's, it's beyond culture or anything. So we have to teach beyond culture or anything. It has to open up. If we don't open up, you. Oh, this is my set. It goes back to the game type thing. I have to go learn enlightenment from my type of person but if you just everybody's learning the same truth that we all are it it is all of us the minds uh a self-aware kid at this point <laughs> changed the world yeah because they had a group of them oh my god <laughs> one person made facebook one person that's one person think about if you have a a group of a hundred people that's that's what it's coming to. This is why tech, this is why it's always being done without doing. Even technology is just the what it, consciousness is either way. It's it's all connecting as regardless. Yeah, you said in your notes the importance of a spiritual community, and uh, you know, and then you mentioned a whole group of them. So, and, and then you were mentioning the internet. So, you know, there is kind of a spiritual community, but I mean, it definitely is. But it doesn't all have to live in some ashram. It it can be connected electronically. That's like dispersed throughout the world. Yeah, it, it's better like that because if you look at every spiritual leader that came that tried to awaken people. They got the person. If you say the um, um, if we talk about Jesus, Jesus was killed by the, the believers. <laughs> if we talk about MLK, when he got when when it happens to them, when they died, the whole like the whole movement stops. Mm. But in today's time, we can teach this. You can be up and you can be at your place. I can be up in my place. But the whole world could start waking up through the Internet. And that's just being real. And you can't stop it at that point because where is it? It's everywhere. I can't. You take one head and it just comes back. You're like you don't want to piss them off. They all start yeah. coming out, and that's what it has to happen. People, these cameras and stuff. Like you got to see what's being presented. Opportunity. I could I could be right here, and however many people can zoom in or like it that is zooming in. I we don't even have to talk about what could be. What is happening right now? People can be anywhere, watch this conversation, learn from it, evolve from it. And we're just sitting here, <laughs> yeah. right here. Yeah. That's, that's what's going to happen. But more, uh, we're going to put that in action, too. This is what the difference is, the action that comes behind us, too. Um, who, who doesn't want to join a team that wants everybody to be better? Yeah, that's great. Well, the team is pretty big and getting bigger. But everybody's invited. The weirder you are, if you come with love, let's see what we can do with you. It's not like you have to change for the team. We need you to be how crazy you are for the team because that's a part of the puzzle. We're trying to put the puzzle together. Humanity, the puzzle comes together where everybody fits in their place 
because they are what they are and it's needed. We need the eye, we need the hand, we need the mouth, we need the brain, we need, we need it all. So that's, what you do matters. That's nice. And, and you know, talk about God a lot. And uh, you know, when you look at the way God operates, God, God's not really into you know, monochrome. You know, it's like there's just like explosive diversity. Yeah. You know, just there's so many species, and so and no, no two people are alike, and no two cats are alike, and and you know, there's just like infinite variety and creativity. It's um, on purpose, and, and yet it's all sort of one part of one large wholeness that's uh, integrated within itself. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 the that's the point of it. Um, for everything to cover every base. That's one shot, big bang. Every base covered all at once. Yeah. We hit every space. We got every single thing at once. This is why everybody comes back and we experience us. So it's like on three, we're going to break out. We're going to do whatever we want. And then we're going to come back, meet in the middle. All right, one, two, three, bang, and then all that. <laughs> and then we come back. You see what we, we know about ourselves? <laughs> and... We have this. We have the technology. We have the everything. We just don't have the understanding of who we are. We're just missing us at the point. <laughs> at mm. this point, it's like you have the button to make paradise, but we don't know <laughs> who's in charge of the button. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just push the button. That's what it all comes down to. Um, That's a good we point. Have, you know, I mean, there's enough food in the world and means of producing food to feed everybody, uh, but there's a lot of people starving. And that's because, you know, the, the self-realization aspect is missing, which means the yeah. compassion aspect is missing and so yeah. on. And that there's all kinds of marvelous technologies. There's, there's technologies which can eliminate global warming, but yeah. narrow-mindedness and greed are, are blocking those. So again, the yeah. self-realization aspect of, is missing because then you wouldn't have the narrow-mindedness and greed. So it's really yeah. sort of the, the common denominator, ultimate, essential ingredient that, that you know, if... If what we're doing if, right here if, happens, yeah. then it all falls into play. This is the last piece of the puzzle. Us. <laughs> who am I? Um, if you know who you are, because look, this is how the game is. The pain is going to make you stir so much. Even if you have a billion dollars, you still want more. I want the moon now <laughs> because it doesn't go away. It just makes it more. I should be happy. I own the moon. I own the whole world. I own everybody. Mm. I'm still not happy. So what are you going to seek? You're going to seek that inner happiness. So it always turns you back to inwardly. Um, so then that's when they start their spiritual journey. Who who am I? Um, and if you find that, because the more you go outward, it's going to give you the power to come back and really search for it. So it's, it's a setup. So once you realize that, like, I can't win, you'll give it up. And once you give it up, you'll realize who you are. Then you'll realize everything is one. I am one. And then you'll come back to the understanding that. And I've been stingy to myself, literally yourself, how you love yourself. You will love this world the way you love yourself because it will be you. So now love yourself and win for yourself. And you don't have to apply something new. You don't have to change nothing. You just got to keep winning and the, the, just passing it out is different. Um, uplifting and with that knowing of yourself changes because you give different. It's, it's different between being a billionaire and giving money that, yes, I'm giving y'all money. Y all, y all, I'm that one. <laughs> and then I have to give to myself. What do you need? How can I help you with the heart, the compassion of it? Now, that's different because you make a connection and you give. Then it comes back. The more you give, the more you receive. And you start to re you start to receive not money. You start to receive connection from people who see you now, um, people who connect with your heart, your understanding, whatever you're doing. Now, the people wants to do it with you because they don't feel that pressure to be judged or I'm lower than you or whatever. They say, like, oh, he's in the mud. Let's get in the mud. They jump in there with you. And now you become a whole being because now you have. Um, really find out, found out what real riches are, connection with yourself. Everybody's God. The more God you connect with, it intensifies. Mm. Your brain is unlimited. Mine's unlimited. If I point the mirror at you and you point it back, we don't know what we can make. See, that's the fun part. We don't know what's going to happen. But if we say what we're going to attempt, that's the process. Anything after the attempt, if we make it, it works, oh, that's cool. If we kind of make it, we need more people. Mm -hmm. It's just ideas and, and let's get more of us. And then somebody comes on the, well, you should have did this. And they tweak it and then we have something new. It's, that's what is, this is, we have, like, we're supposed to be unstoppable. 
whatever someone lacks, the world should have, like your other reflection. We should have like an ant colony. I have you as much as you have me. Anything to try to get into this has to deal with all of us. So nothing can ever get in. And at the same time, we can. The, it's just like the, the Big Bang again. Once we once it's taught, self-realization is taught. Like you go to school and you taught one, two, three. Once that is taught, known. What happens from there is what we would call heaven on earth, literally, because you are earth and you are heaven, one walking. Yeah. That's what it's about. Nice. Well, that's <laughs> probably a good stopping place. So how, how can people connect with you if they want to? Um, if you want to connect with me, go to my YouTube. It's Enlightened Minds um, at my YouTube. NDZ. And I'll be linking to that from your page on BatGap. But how can they connect with you personally if they want to? I mean, you, uh, want, you want me to put your email address on, the, on your page uh, or what? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, go to, uh, the way I do it is that uh, I just give videos. So you can go to my YouTube, follow my channel. Um, and I do Skype. So I can put like the Skype skypes uh in my videos or things like that because i i'm about talking to the people personally i i like to i like to really know you <laughs> sure well if you want well we could talk about it later but I, what however you want people to contact you i'll put that on your youtube page on your bat gap page okay and so we know, just put my email and my youtube so either way yeah, you put your skype id there if you want people but you oh, might, yeah that'll work too. you might start getting a lot of invitations i don't know how you want to handle that <laughs> but uh if you want we can do that we can always take right. it off again too if it gets to be too much oh uh, I'll, I'll always know how to <laughs> 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 i'll use this <laughs> yeah <What phone? laughs> okay good well david it's really been uh, a lot of fun getting to know you and talking to you today and um you know I think you know you're you're less than half my age. I think you're going to live a long life and make a wonderful contribution to the world. You're already doing that, and uh, you know you're an inspiration to a lot of people. So keep up the good work. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah. So let me just make a general concluding remark. Um, I've been speaking with David Thomas, and um, as as always, he'll have his own page on BatGap.com with a little bit about him and necessary contact information and um, this again is part of an ongoing series of conversations next week I'll be speaking with a visionary cosmologist and if you don't know what that is then tune in next week and you'll find out <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks for listening or watching and we'll see you for the next one thanks David <laughs>